Hello community! Today we code and regenerate here an image segmentation, panoptic image segmentation. For my last video, three questions emerged from my viewers. Which pixel decoder? What is a binary mask? And why we switch cross attention? Now let's start with cross attention beforehand. Here on the left side, you see here the original Google Transformer model architecture. And if you know that we are looking here just at the decoder stack and here the encoder stack for BERT, but we are looking now at the decoder stack, you see here the explanation. And I have a specific video on the multi-head attention mechanism here in BERT on NLP, how to explain Q, K, and V self-attention. And if you wanna have a deep dive, this is the video for you. We here look just, have a look, it is so similar to the transformer decoder architecture. In the original, we have here a mask multi-head attention. Here we have mask attention. Then we have here a multi-head self-attention. Here's our self-attention. We have a feed-forward network. We have here our feed-forward network. We have always the norm added. So you see, it is not so complicated. It is very similar to what we have. Now, the interesting part, of course, here is the backbone and the pixel decoder. So let's focus on those part a little bit stronger. From the backbone, I told you last time that this is here the S-Win transformer, the shifted window transformer architecture. And if you want, in a very easy explanation, we have three components here. We have a backbone, our transformer, that extracts the low resolution features from an image. This is great. And in order to handle smaller objects, there is now what they called a multi-scale strategy to utilize high resolution features. So they have here as a second point, this pixel decoder that gradually upsamples low resolution features from the output of the backbone to generate high resolution per pixel embedding. And our transformer decoder that operates on image features to process here the object queries. Here we have now the final binary mask predictions that are encoded from per pixel embedding with the object queries. So the pixel decoder, you can use in theory, I think any pixel decoder you like. In the original paper mask former, so the paper one year before mask two former, they used the feature pyramid network. And I have here the archive, the preprint, and they use this feature pyramid as a component in the image recognition system for detecting objects at different scale. Now, they, I would not say play around, but they found they have a stronger performance about across different segmentation tasks. If now in the mask two former architecture, they use the more advanced multi-scale deformable attention transformer. And I have here the original preprint of this publication. But you have always to be aware, these are works that are years in the making. There are scientists, dozens of teams of scientists working on this. So if you do not understand it at first look, do not be disappointed. It is not such an easy topic. And yes, a viewer wrote to me again in the pixel decoder. Also, we have transformers. Transformers are everywhere in vision technology. Yes, you are absolutely right. And just to show you here, this are the deformable transformer for end-to-end -end object detection. And you see here again the transformer architecture. And yeah, uh, one viewer from China. Thank you. I think you are in Shenzhen. There are also better, like here, feature-aligned pyramid networks for dense image prediction. Yes, of course, there are better modules, there are better code segments. You can really insert whatever you prefer into those objects. And to show you that this is not natural science where you think, okay, we have an experiment and nature tells us in quantum field theory on quarks or Higgs particles. No, here, Computer science, I'd just like to show you this from the original documentation. We validate the importance of each component of this mask to former by removing 
one item or one component at a time. So you see, they experiment, the original team at Facebook also, they experiment with this. They, there is no law in nature that says you have to build it in this way or this way. If you have, if you're interested in constructing, deconstructing, improving, it is so important here that we experiment with the configuration with the architecture of this model and we have some evaluation and a model that performs best in the evaluation task you can dig this model and then you make the next step so again do not be disappointed if you think everybody else would understand it because it is logic no there's a lot of hard work into understanding and constructing those designs yeah, and the last question before we go coding now is why is it called a binary mask? Well, if you look here at the attention mask at the feature location X and Y, you have it's either zero or it is infinity otherwise. So you have only a binary value configuration. So I know it sounds maybe a little bit strange, but if you look at the mathematics, you see immediately it is either zero or infinity, negative infinity. Therefore, the, the term binary mask. But now let's start coding. Yes, finally. And now finally we can code. At first we have to install PyTorch, Torch Vision, and Torch Audio. And then we install from Facebook Research Dedictron 2. Never mind what it is. We install Gradio, OpenCV, SciPy, NumPy, everything. We do it now because, gee, I can tell you, it takes time till everything is installed here. So close to five minutes till everything was done. And in the meantime, I just show you, yes, Torch, Kuyota Core, yes, the Electron version. Everything is here. So next thing, we install our transformers. Since it's not, since it's the latest stuff and it's not included in the standard package here, we have to install it here in this particular way. And then for our mask, we just choose some color palette. Never mind the color palette. What is nice? Yes, we import here everything we need. And here, the most important from our transformer library, Hugging Face library, we are now able to import mask to former. And this is brand new. And let me show you here on this Hugging Face block. There is an excellent block. I recommend this to you. Universal image segmentation with mask to former. It was published on January 20th, 2023. Three authors, Niels Rogge, I know, excellent coder. I just discovered here the code of Shivi. It is great. I used her code as a guideline for my GUI implementation in Gradio and Adiric. If you want to know more about image segmentation and you still want to read more about it, beautiful, this is here from Hugging Face, the blog you have to read. We go back to coding. So we know now we have here our mask to former universal segmentation. Config, what is the smallest config? As I told you, I want to know my system. So here we have mask to former config. Beautiful, it is in the transformer model available now at the end of January, so we can use it. Here you have the backbone configuration with all the different things, whatever you need, whatever you want to modify, do it, go tune it, whatever you want to do, you can see here, here is your configuration file. For the moment we say default is fine for us. If you want to have a deep dive, here's the link for you for modeling mask to former mask to former model output whatever so we defined now a function called load model and image processor where we have our classical model model equals mask to former for universal segmentation from a pre-trained model checkpoint we put it on a device a cpu a gpu and then we have here our classical image preprocessor mask former image processor from pre-trained model checkpoint. Great. Now, we have to choose now either from Hugging Face the semantic pre-trained model or the panoptic pre-trained model. So I say for the segmentation task semantic, I go with the ADA 20K semantic model, the pre-trained model, 
And for the panoptic model, I chose the larger model on the Coco data set for our panoptic segmentation task. So what else? Here we just have a function to draw the mask, the panoptic segmentation mask over the picture. And then we draw a semantic segmentation mask over the picture. This is nothing special, but here it becomes interesting. Now we have to predict the mask. Now, at first we load our default checkpoint and our mode, uh, we load our model and our image processor, beautiful. So we have model and image processor. Then we say, okay, we run the model for the prediction. We get our outputs here in PyTorch. And we have, of course, to do some post-processing. Again, we split it up for the segmentation task semantic. We have here our color palette and our image processor post-process panoptic segmentation. Beautiful. This is it. This is not at all any complicated task. Just execute this. And then finally, we have our Gradio GUI. So here we work with blocks. The first is, of course, we have a headline and then we have just a normal description. And then we say, okay, we want to have a drop down with a semantic and a panoptic um, field. And then we say, okay, I have my input and this is the output of the system. Then I have a button where I say, okay, run mask to former for the inference task on a pre trained mask to former model from Facebook and start. Everything if name is main beautiful. So let's do this. And as you know, we have this either here in line in our Jupyter notebook, in our Colab notebook, or you see it here. So we can draw our images in here. Or nice, of course, is if you go here on a Gradio Live link that we have here full screen. And here you see our GUI. We have a mask to former for a panoptic and a segment, semantic segmentation task on a free Colab notebook, either CPU and or GPU. And let's do the first one. The, you remember I told you here, this picture here with the crowd. Let's do some panoptic task because this is the really interesting task. I showed you in my last video how the image classification and segmentation here for each and every person happened. So let's see this now here in real time on our mask to former GUI. And here we are. This is exactly what we have been looking for. We have here the car in, the fr in front, then we have here person, 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 handbag, person, cardboard, person, 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 wall, beautiful, a banner, identified, car, car, and the bus. Ah, even the road now is identified in the pavement here. So you see, this is the way, this is originally the way I did it, and I presented to you this in my last video. But do you remember when we did the image classification task? Let's take the smaller one. I told you, that we could not succeed with a pure image classification because we have here the human face in the background and the light chain in the foreground. But now here with image segmentation, we succeed. We have here identified as a person to 99%, here also a light. And if you look at the semantic here, you see now that the human face is identified by our image segmentation model. And here we are. You see green is the human face and here our lights here we have here these big uh, yellow indicators here for our light bulbs and the human face is detected. Of course the chain is not really resolved in detail the light chain with the cable but just for an image segmentation task here on a small model, on a free Colab notebook. It is not bad, not bad at all. So in any way, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. You can see with Gradio you can build beautiful GUI and you just take a picture, you drop it in here, you click 
and everything else is performed for you. You can send this link. It is gorgeous. If you do at first, of course, a debug is true that you see you have a debugger running. And if everything is fine, you just, just say share is true and debug is false. And then you can go and calculate here your image segmentation. I say thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope there was some new content for you that you can use in your professional work. And I see you in my next video.